Well, just days after a woman was hit and killed while riding her bike near the art museum, the city is taking action to protect bicyclists. Yeah, it was the second deadly accident involving a bicyclist so far this year. The first happened in February when a bicyclist was hit by a SEPTA bus that was up in the northeast. The most recent uh, was this Saturday, like Alex was just telling you, when a car hit the rear tire of a bicycle, throwing the rider, 74-year-old woman, into a, the windshield of the car. She died at the hospital. And so far, let's see, in the last 15, 16 months, we've had, well, that'd be 10 people killed. Because uh, eight, yeah, we lost eight people last year because of these, you know, bike accidents. So um, here's a live shot, obviously, of the art museum. And this is one of our toughest intersections and stretches of road where these, it's so difficult to negotiate this area in front of the art museum. You know, Kelly Drive comes together here at this intersection. Spring Garden, Pennsylvania uh, is also right there. That intersection right there, one of the toughest in the city. And then you go all the way over to MLK Drive, which we're panning to now. A lot of people like to bike there too, but at least you're safe on MLK Drive because it's closed down during the pandemic. We all know that's a tough area, whether on a bike or a car. All right, so Sarah Clark Stewart, the executive director of the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia joins us now. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, what, what do you think is the main culprit when it comes to these bike car collisions? The main issue is that there's not enough uh, separation between motorists and bicyclists. There needs to be better protection of bike lanes with physical structure such as posts or curbing or uh, other barriers or even parked cars. There just needs to be um, protection for bike lanes and that will help uh, the bicyclists feel safer and be safer mm -hmm. and it will also help calm traffic and slow people down and reduce speeding. And that's the interesting thing when it comes to the bike routes in this city. There's so many different variations. Do you know why some it's just there's a white bicycle that's painted. Some they do have the green barrier. Some actually have physical barriers. Why is it so different and different? It's just because that's what space allows. Well, there's a variety of reasons. Uh, bike lanes started to be put in in the 1990s. And as time has progressed and more and more people are bicycling in the country, the technology and the design for bike lanes has really improved. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of change over time. So the ones put down in 19, you know, in the late 1990s just aren't really that good anymore. There's better designs now. And so um, that's why you have a variety of different ones. But what we're trying to do, what, what we want the city to do is build a high quality bike network. So all all lanes per connected, but also uh, as protected as possible. Yeah, and, and got, that's what we're striving for. The only way it's going to work is that they're all connected. There's big stretches where they, there's no there's a bike lane and it's beautiful. It's green and all this. And then there's a big wide stretch where there's no bike lane at all. Then you hook up with another bike lane. So let's put up the graphic right. that we got here. I know that uh, you're going to it's a little bit hard to see, but the blue lines on this map are completed bike lanes. And then the pink you're going to see uh, are planned projects coming hopefully soon. And right. then there you see some black lines where there probably should be bike lanes, but there's no projects planned yet. Where right. in the city do you, do you think it, we're doing it right? Is it spruce and pine? Is that good for you? Uh, the best lanes, I think, are on JFK and Market Streets uh, mm. between 15th and 20th. You have the bike lane next to the curb, then you have a row of parked cars. And so that's the most that's protection. And um, you feel really comfortable and safe riding on those lanes. Um, we have about 10 miles of protected bike lanes right now in the city of Philadelphia. Mayor Kenny pledged to build 40. And so he's only added about five or six in the past uh, in his administration. So we are, um, you know, really encouraging him to accelerate the pace of installing those kinds of lanes. Um, and it takes time. It's uh, it's it's not an easy thing. You have to no. do a lot of com community consultation and engagement. But um, and it does cost money. But um, we uh, are urging Mayor Kenny to really keep to his pledge and add more protected bike lanes sooner and faster um, so that we can reach this goal gotcha. of a protected network. 
And have you talked with him recently, especially after this? Um, have you heard anything about the movement to get more? I hope to speak with them this week, but I'm working also with other organizations to call on Mayor Kenny and City Council to add more funding for uh, for for bike lanes and other kinds of traffic yeah. calming uh, into the, the this coming budget. Um, there are a number of items regarding parks and housing and transportation that really need more funding and attention from city council. I agree and with the you mayor. about that. The, 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 the ones that have the park cars and then the bike lane and then the curb is the way to go. But I'm, uh, we'll see how that works out. Can we go back to the uh, art museum spot here? One thing we got to get stopped is that, you know, I love ice cream and ice cream trucks. Um, what? Yeah. No, go back to the, to, to the original shot, please. Right there, you see the green bike lane in front of the art museum. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the, people will park there, or you'll get ice cream trucks, and, and you know they'll park on the green. So then the bikers have to go out to the left of the vehicle and into this this very fast moving traffic because people constantly speed through there. So we got to get that stopped somehow. Right, the bike lane was actually designed to have. Uh, posts in the in what's called the buffer area, the the white white striped area, and so that it would prevent cars from pulling in and parking right next to the curb. Um, the posts were not put in, and so we've been calling on the city to to do it to yeah. put the posts yeah. in yeah. and um, and 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 prevent the food trucks and the cars from parking. It is a disaster and. Um, I'm surprised nothing has happened yet uh, right there in front of the art museum. You know, the, the museum and the Rocky statue, uh, Martin Luther King Drive, they're all, you know, very popular places and people are attracted there. Thousands of people are flooding there every weekend. Um, and unfortunately, we still have a, basically a highway of cars yeah. coming through um, yeah. and we you need to have a better balance. And the better balance is we need to protect bicyclists and pedestrians so that they can safely get to the art museum and around it. All right, well, good luck with this and keep us updated on the, the changes. Okay, thank you so thank much, you Mike and Alex. Yeah, yes, people really you. want to get down there to MLK Drive, so they naturally will go to the art museum to try to get down there, you right. know, where it's somewhat safe once you get down in there. Uh, all right, we'll take a break, come on back.